Go ahead. <laughs> All right. I have been very blessed to be in a position where I have learned a lot from my experience of being with Ultragenics and learning a lot. And I have also been able to um, help people who have been onboarded after me. And one thing that I feel is very important is to uh, gain trust in my coworkers, And that is something that um, takes time and it takes a lot of patience because they obviously don't know, uh, you know, everything about the job. And I have some experience to back that up. However, um, I really do feel that when I take the time out of my day to show somebody visually how to file properly a document in the TMF. Um, I don't just tell them. I basically want to meet with them face to face. I sit down with them and I really show them the steps. Um, once I show them the steps, I then have them do it alongside with me because I feel that people learn differently across the board. Some people are very hands-on learners, which is very helpful for this position. Um, and it takes a lot of patience, but it takes a lot of time as well. And over time, the more that I put myself as available and responsive to their emails or their questions through a chat, uh, the faster I gain the trust of my workers. Overall, I feel like this allows to be the Okay, cutting out a little bit at the end. Can you still hear us? Can you hear me? Yeah, I, we can now hear you. We can just hear you say, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so that, that does apply as well to my liaison work with working personally with the studies. If I have the trust of the study, then overall we will be successful in getting uh, really important things basically moving in a study. So if documents have issues, I need to be able to gain the trust of the study team for them to know that if there is a question that they have, that they always know that I'm available to help them out. And um, we'll make sure that they also understand as well to the full stability going forward. Um, so I think trust is very important. Yeah, no, I think it's good. I think I would have switched it a little bit, start with the study teams and talk about like, like what you just said about like being reliable for them has made it so that they can then trust you. And then therefore they can get the feedback of like, let's say you, the documents have issues and now they trust you with the feedback um, and then talk about developing that patience for the incoming people um, and letting them like you trust them with your work. And then they for, and you take the time for that. And then, um, and then you can also talk about like, and therefore like they trust you to give you questions, right? So it's more about your efforts to build trust yeah. versus um, getting them to like, that you trust them. Um, but no, gotcha. I think it's still good. And I, yeah, I would just switch it around. I definitely would say everything, okay. but. Um, and then um, I wanna know what are your unique skills and abilities? I believe that my unique skills include the ability to learn quickly. Um, I have always been able to be very forward with questions that I have and I'm not afraid to ask questions if I'm unclear about something. I also make a big point to ask for clarification and repeat what I think I understand just to make sure that I understand what I am learning and that the person who's teaching me these new uh, skills also knows that I'm comprehending what they're saying. Um, so the ability to learn quickly is something that I feel is very unique because some people sometimes hesitate to ask questions because they don't wanna sound dumb. But for me, it's all about getting the information, um, understanding it and 
not being afraid to speak up when I don't understand something to my fullest ability. Yeah. And I think I would maybe it's a great answer. I would just phrase it with some buzzwords to be like mm -hmm. my like high level of communication and transparency allows me to learn extremely fast because I apply the work, but then I can um, communicate back when I have questions and things like that. Or so trying to um, think of like kind of how to summarize it prior um, to kind of yeah. giving your answer, but overall your answer is really good. I liked it. Um, okay. okay. What is your greatest accomplishment? Professionally, correct? Yes, professionally, yeah. Okay. You want to be like, my children. Uh, <laughs> <Done>. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, okay, so I have had the ability to work with CROs. Uh, so we, as Ultragenics, as a sponsor, have the ability to hire on um, CRO companies who will basically um, support the study team and fulfill, you know, certain things that uh, we ask them to do to help the study basically move along faster. And one of the uh, speed bumps that we had with one of my studies was not being able to know exactly what was in a specific studies TMF, uh, basically because we've never had a report where it shows all of the classifications in the by number. Uh, when you pull a report for Viva, it shows you everything that is in the actual TMF, but it doesn't categorize it by the classification number, which is pretty big. Um, and so when there was a, what's called an ISF tool that was brought on by Judy Wong, who is also part of Ultragenics, um, I was able to bring this idea to the CRO studies um, and really help them understand that with this tool, they are able to implement uh, the use of the classification number, which helps them and their um, site monitors when they go to visit the sites, you have what's called an ISF binder, which contains all the important documents that are pertaining to that site. And oftentimes the site binder does not, there's no way before the ISF tool to know classification wise, what documents fall under what classification according to our TMF map. So they would upload it and then they would have to look it up. Whereas with this tool, you are able to not only know what's in the ISF binder in real time, but you are also able to see what classification that specific document correlates to when you look it up in our Viva system. So it's a big link um, and because we have really important milestones that we look for, and we have what's called a EDL or expected document list for every milestone, uh, for study startup, we have specific documents that we want to have uploaded and we expect to be uploaded. This tool is super helpful for that. So overall, we have introduced this tool to the CROs and it has become more efficient with being able to have the sites be more visible with what's in their binder and then us being on our end with the TMF being able to see how those documents fall under our TMF map and so that I feel like has been a very great accomplishment because it's a big task to take on and it takes a lot of time and energy and also cooperation from Ultragenics and also the CROs but um, with spearheading this project, I feel like that has been overall a really good accomplishment. I think, great. I think it's a great tool. I like how you summarize it. I think that was important because it was a lot of information and you do want to give the, the background of who's involved yeah. in it, but then also talk a little bit. I would think you missed out a little bit on like your role of it. Like you said, like we implemented okay. this tool, but be like, I implemented this tool um, and this is Luke and, um, you look to get a little bit more on the camera if you want to make faces. Um, 
and then uh but basically try to like really make sure that you say like i played a big role in the study and like then a little bit more on the outcome like in the study teams were really appreciative because it gave them insight that they did not have before and we were able to like properly uh, manage the um the tmf <laughs> okay. yeah okay. Okay. Cool. yeah all right um, my mom's doing a great job of watching like <laughs> okay and then i have one more for you and then we can jump into questions for me because what i wanted to say also was that i felt like that question helped out with my one of my questions was going to be so you can continue to think about this but is mm -hmm. um give an example of like creativity and i think what again i'm not sure they're going to ask you these questions but that answer would fit also really good into that be like oh the yeah, site yeah. had this problem there was no solution but i knew that they were working on a tool so i was able to creatively solve this as a new tool and and then implement it right so um and yeah. again always feel free to like talk up your role in it and again you, you sometimes you want to be careful with that if it's the actual company which is like that's my situation and that's your situation right you're you're applying to the same mm -hmm. company so i do have to watch out and be like i did everything and people are like great because i did it actually hillary like you know like, so, um i was i was a lot like writing this personal statement and then i gave it to the person to read and i did like talk up something that like we did and i was like well you know it's just what we do but like, i was kind of like i wonder how to think this um no, i definitely put we but i i definitely try to i played out my role in it um and i think that's good like i think it's important yeah. you highlight your your role um and then definitely add the we in there but mm -hmm. um feel free to take like ownership of things and highlight okay. your your aspect of it um so you definitely in general you always want to talk up yourself in these in these situations um yeah i think that's all we have time for and we can switch over to do a questions a couple questions for me um and Perfect. we can do the same questions or whatnot um i shared a google doc with you um yes but yeah and then i think that's overall though i think you're really prepared i think those questions i asked you were more so just to get you thinking about certain situations that like i said you could use for multiple questions right it's having those yeah. really solid ones. Um, like example, your first question about like the, the trust, I think mm -hmm. you might want to, if there was a question about like, give a time when you gave feedback, you'd want to kind of use that similar situation where you talked about onboarding people, but be really specific. Yeah. Like you don't need to give names. Yeah. Like, there was this one person and this is the issue they had. Um, mm -hmm. Cause I've definitely like through research have seen that like it's really good to give very specific answers um, versus yeah. anything very broad but you can like summarize it and then dive in and then give it like a summary of your role and the impact okay so, yeah. overall I think you're going to be doing awesome I think it's going to be great um and then yeah keep us posted on any sort of actual interview date and we will continue to get you ready yeah but, sounds good um so yeah um, and then I, I know Keith stepped out to help with Luke. So um, <laughs> anyone want to have any questions for me that they would want to ask? This is open to everybody. I have one if, but yeah. if anybody else. Okay. Um, so tell me a time when you have, hmm. when you had to work closely with someone whose personality was different from yours. Okay, I have a good one for this one. Basically, so I am typically a very positive, outgoing, energetic person, and I feel like my positive attitude has a um, an impact on the team's dynamic. Um, but I did run into a situation where I had somebody as a coworker who was above me that I need to like support, and she her personality was the complete opposite, like very sarcastic, which I like found funny, but I wasn't too sure if she enjoyed my like overly bubbly personality and I kind of thought she didn't um and so I had to be very careful about it and um in, in general her personality was just like I hate the world it's horrible and I wanted to work with her and develop a relationship and she was just overall very negative about everything and so I appropriately toned down my bubbliness around her so that like in efforts to build a relationship with her so i could kind of get the vibe that she wasn't digging it and and then i slowly built trust with her 
by asking to take on projects, which at first she was hesitant to like delegate any of her work, but then slowly, like, you know, she was overworked, so she'd give me things to do. And I would really prioritize them so that I could produce the best possible work and build that relationship where she knew she could trust me to do good work. Um, and then that kind of broke down the walls and barriers that she had that was like, against getting to know anybody in the workplace and then we slowly became like really good friends and um I've been to her house and hang out with her little corgis and like I really got to know her but it took a lot of effort and I think a lot of people would do the initial like uh, like I'm just not going to deal with this person because this person clearly is like doesn't really want to be around me um and I also didn't take the attitude of like I am who I am like I'm not going to change for anyone else like I did change and like tone myself down a little bit just so I could have that opportunity to work with her and then de develop that trust. And then through that trust, we could develop like the rest of our relationship. Do you think that answers that? Any thoughts and feedbacks from anyone? I liked it. I like the answer. Okay. Cool. That's my, my go-to for that one. Logan, thoughts? No thoughts, so I'll wait if someone else does okay. have one. I do have a question now, so. Okay, I, th I think you can go to the next one. I love the background, Logan. Yeah, Thank I know, you. I do love Logan's background. Apparently my director's husband works for uh, LucasArts or LucasFilms, whatever, so. So does Negative Maria, who is my example. <laughs> <laughs> so she, her, her wife works for. Yeah, the Grogu is supposed to be animated, but I couldn't get the video to work. Yeah, um, he's like, So, he's sorry about that, guys, but. All right, so this is the question that I got in um, one of my interviews like last month that I didn't know I didn't know what to do with too much on the spot but um, but could you describe someone who has uh, served as a mentor to you in your professional career yes I um, can uh, and I'm, I'm going to answer these questions very much for like genetic but um, so I have uh, enjoyed embracing any sort of new change and as a result, we have a new coaching system. And so the moment I heard about that, I signed up to get a coach. And in the future, I'd like to be a coach. But I signed up um, to get a coach. And I um, was able to reconnect with a colleague when I first started. And through this coaching program, we've actually become really close. And she's provided me a lot of feedback and has helped me in multiple aspects in terms of being a mentor for when situations happen um, in terms of like site enrollment and, and learning from her much more experience um, in terms of she's involved um, on like a lot higher level in terms of like patient retention, which is something that I'd like to learn more about. Uh, but then she's also, um, we've picked random topics to like work on and which has really helped me with my self-evaluation and one of the things that I've decided to pick was to increase my listening ability because um, I find that I do enjoy and easily talk. And so I have been focused a lot on through my help with this mentor, um, actually doing like almost like social experiments where I go into situations and I try not to talk and I try to see like how it is hard for me in certain situations and what are the benefits in certain situations. So through our new coaching program, I have um, really enjoyed getting to have a direct mentor that can work me through both very personal um, aspects that will then uh, apply to, to being able to produce more work. Uh, yeah, I thought that was that good. Worked? Okay. I, think, I think you did a really good job of uh, making sure that you were talking yourself up still. Okay. Despite, despite, because to me, that's what threw me off about the yeah. question. Was that it was like, talk about someone else and their impact, I guess, on you. Um, and, but I think that you managed to still make it about you and talk about yourself pretty well within that. So no, that's a good, I did not at all prepare for that question. That's a great, great question, Logan, because I want to test my ability to come up with things. So yeah, thank you. Any other questions? If no one has a question, Hillary, I can ask a question. Go for it, Robin. Um, so since you mentioned listening, I have a question. Careful listening and effective communications go together. Tell me about a specific time when you, your skill in listening helps you communicate better. Yes. 
So as mentioned, per this program, I have been thinking about, you know, and I think this is great because it's an opportunity to evaluate how you can improve, right? We can all improve in so many different aspects. And um, I do want to become a better listener. Like, I feel like I'm a pretty good listener, but I think because I can talk a lot, I think it comes off as I'm not a good listener. So I would like to like be the best possible listener and like really figure out how to like deep listen. And so I tried some social experiments where I went to this really wonderful, exciting event where we had these VR machines that um, help a surgeon learn how to do the surgery we're doing. So it's really cool technology and the CEO was coming. And so like this really cool like chance, but the chance to like mingle and to like talk yourself up and get to know people. And so I thought that'd be a really great chance for me not to do the regular Hillary move of like talking a lot, because how am I gonna learn a lot about different other people if I'm talking? Like they'll learn about me, but the goal of the experiment is to like learn about them. And so I, I did this and it was pretty interesting to see my, my overall thoughts were only talk if you bring value to the conversation. Because a lot of times I think, I think, oh, I have something to, to say and therefore I should speak it. And so I've been trying to figure out how do I instead focus on only bringing value. And so it was really interesting because there's multiple times we're talking and these are like high up people that I wanted to like mingle with and walk away with like knowing my name. And multiple times I like almost jumped in, but I was like, you know what? I don't need to. I'm just going to let other people talk. And unless they like directly ask me a question or like I really feel like I need to, then I will talk. And um, it was really interesting to see how I went through the process. But I think in the end, I got to know people so much better because I was really listening to them. And in the few times I talked, I feel as though I had something to really contribute because I was like really focused on the conversation and what everyone was saying and what like trying to understand what everyone was thinking through what they were saying versus thinking about like, what am I going to say next? How am I going to get into the conversation with these like big wigs? And so it was a really great experiment. Um, and then like after the event, I felt as though I talked to these two different people who are in this role um, that are, are sur surgical device liaisons. And I work with them all the time. This is the first time I've seen them in person. Um, and there's multiple things I ask them to do. And sometimes they don't really do it. And afterwards, we got to have this really like raw, honest conversation about why, like, why they're refusing to do this technology that I'm trying to do. Um, and it was great because like the lady was like, it's just a really heavy case and I don't want to carry it. And I was like, oh, thank you for that feedback. Like that like, makes me understand why people are like ignoring my emails and like not getting back to me. And like, it really, I think I, by listening and kind of like really developing that relationship and hearing them and trying to like be a different person in myself and trying to like evaluate how I could not speak as much and just really listen. I was able to build a potentially deeper conversation, right? And then, um, and like this connection with them. And then we walked away and then they were still able to like, in the next conversation, bring up something that they might not have. If I just like talked about myself the whole time and I won't do the hands in the camera. <laughs> okay, we <I> promise. <laughs> but yes, but thank you, Robin. That was a good question. That was great. Any thank thoughts you. on what you would say differently or? No, I was, I was yeah. waiting, I was waiting for you to answer the complete question. So I was really glad once you got to that part. Yeah. Nothing. And I think a good point is just um, even back to Alicia's interview, just when she was talking about how she communicates and how she likes to repeat things back. I think it would be great to display that during the interview, just to repeat the question sometimes when she's asked a question, just to show that she's an active listener like that. Okay, no, that's good. Thank you, Robin. Any other questions? Um, I really liked your response to that. I think you showed a lot of like enthusiasm and like vigor in your answer. And I think that's important. Um, my question is, how do you go about motivating your team and increasing uh, like team dynamics and culture? Great question. Um, I have thought about that because there's like leadership questions. So when I first started my first kind of leadership role, 
was at Pharmacyclics and I had a team that was very disjointed and I had like inherited the team, right? So I didn't get a chance to like build the team myself. And as a result, um, it was for, these were all people who were working on like TMF um, and like document processing. And I think they felt very removed from like the patients, right? Um, they very much like, no one ever talked about like, oh, we're doing this because of the patients or anything like that. Um, and they all felt there was like all these different HR issues and fairly disgruntled people, people who are not even like showing up to work. And so it's kind of a, um, a big task to take on and try to figure out, like it clearly wasn't working. So I felt as though, I felt very empowered to be like anything I try that's new, like is worth the effort because you don't, you sometimes don't want to, um, you know, break something that's working, but if it's already kind of broken and not working, it is a little bit easier to try and like be creative with um, effort. And so I definitely tried to, to get to know everyone, but the biggest thing I think that had the, the largest impact was instilling the purpose with everybody. Like I really talked about um, doing what we were doing, especially in terms of like completeness reviews and like um, helping study teams be ready for inspections by like, we're doing this to help the drug succeed so that the patients succeed. And we were doing cancer um, and we were actually had one specific drug and using it in multiple different indications. And so like every time we got an approval, it was like a lot more people were able to have access to this drug and it was life changing, right? And we were like basically saving lives and to turn us into kind of more of a, a mindset of like, we're superheroes, we're supporting this really important process that helps drugs get approved. And I think that really changed the team dynamic. And it also um, kind of created a collective goal that everyone was working towards. And I was actually fairly surprised that it, it worked so well in the sense that people from very different backgrounds and very different age groups, right? That was another aspect of it is there was, um, different dynamics between the group, the way it was before. Um, and there was new people we brought on and, and there was a, a, a huge range in terms of the age of people within the group. And as a result, I think we were all able to get behind the, um, the goal of trying to help patients. And we also did a lot of little fun things like we tried to celebrate people's birthdays and get together. And like, I bought people pizza, you know, like I it did, did that small thing um, to try to help people and create more of like a, a family dynamic. And it also made my life better because like I was pregnant and they threw me a baby shower. It was really cute. And like, we ended up like getting to know each other better where before I felt like everyone just showed up to work to do their work. And then they were out and like, they didn't want to have relationships with anyone and they didn't really like anyone. And they were just here to do their work and don't tell them how to do their work. Um, and so it was really interesting to, um, work with the people and try to figure out what was the best way to do it. And especially with very little leadership on experience under my belts. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Any feedback, Nick? What would you have done differently? No, that was great. I enjoyed that. That was a good answer. Any other questions? No, we have, we have six minutes left or it's like a little, left, little shy of seven. Ken, you haven't asked a question yet. <laughs> I'm not. Let me know if you have anything. Any questions? Don't be shy. I have a question. <laughs> what is one thing that you would change about your current company and, and the process? Ooh, all right, good one. Um, I think a dramatic change we could make, which I think would be pretty easy to implement, would be to, we have started something called the GSM Forum where people get together, um, but we aren't meeting very often. And it sounds like we don't really have a budget to do things. And I think the company could do a better job of trying to connect people. And I feel like I have seen it successful in a small scale of um, my study team that I used to be on, where we would meet up monthly and as part of our like meetings, have like fun little like silly games we would play. And it would just 
give us the opportunity to know each other a little bit deeper. And as a result, like very quickly, like had a very like larger connection between each other and like a stronger bond and having that connection leads to being able to be comfortable with people and ask them for questions, which is really what we want to do because the way we're set up is we have multiple studies that are being run, but using the same like platform and the same drug. And so it's like good to be able to feel very comfortable with your team and be able to have the ability to ask people questions. So I think a very easy way to help foster connections and create a good community would be to have the small budget it requires or even just encouraging people to allocate time to connect um, and to connect in multiple levels, right? Like I mentioned, a small study team, but then connect as a larger group, but even um, within big segments of the company. And for example, I just noticed that when I looked on a Genentech's internal thing called GWiz, where we can look up people, um, I looked at mine and it said like colleagues and it listed a whole bunch of people. And like, I had no idea who any of these people were. And they were like at my level, but because there are so many of us, it just so happened that like, you know, the, the 20 did, they displayed just didn't happen to be anyone that I had ever come into contact with. And it made me realize like, wow, like one, we're a large company, but two, like there's so much opportunity for connection that we're not doing. And it would also foster like lessons learned being able to share things that happen in your studies and having those connections would be better. Sats, Keith, did I answer your question? Yeah, no, I think it was great. Yes, it's up point down. But I think it was great. I think you showed the issue, showed examples of how it could be.